Nothing summed up the hurling weekend quite like a tweet from Dylan O'Connell saying, if anything sums up Junior B, my 52-year-old dad came on today and marked my 19-year-old sister's boyfriend. That's brilliant. Like, you're never getting into this house again if you score off me. <laughs> <laughs> and I see someone tweeting that, did you get a good slap at him? You'd imagine you'd just uh, be having a few words in his ear. The 19-year-old isn't, yeah. isn't going to know what to say. <laughs> you know, I mean, I wouldn't know what to say. That's the joy of, like, Junior B. I, lo I love all that kind of stuff, like. Yeah, then again, like, the 19-year-old, he can't be a great prospect if he's playing Junior B. No, it could be their second team and he could be just... I don't the 52-year-old is thinking, just, there, there could be bad genes here. I mean, what sort of errors have I done if this guy's playing Junior B at 19? Not good enough. He's not getting her hand in marriage unless he passes the <laughs> test. Unless he goes up to junior A at least. Funnily enough, like I, I just on that, like he, he could have said to him, like you know, he could have like made a uh, you know a light-hearted threat to him or whatever. But I've also heard of in Camogie matches, I've been told by players that the younger player could be marking an older player, mm. and she could say that she's um, pregnant when she's not. Really. To basically make sure that she wouldn't like hit her or tackle her heavy or anything like that. I've told, been told that from the horse's mouth, yeah. Right, yeah. it's just different. But people, make, I'm not saying this man saying anything, but uh, you just don't know what people do to get an age. Um, the Wexford hurling championship this weekend, so it's going to be St Anne's against St Martin's. But just to look at the the semi finals that happened, St Anne's beat Rapparees two fourteen to fourteen, and St Martin's beat Fern St Aidan's two sixteen to one fifteen. So the beauty coming into the final is that St Anne's had lost St Martin's in a group game by as many as thirty two points. That's mad. Eight, the, but, yeah. 22 to 14 points. So I was, I was on to Barry Cleary, who does a lot of great stats work, and um, he was saying, saying and like making the final after winning the f only one of their five group games, and they would have been in relegation had Martins, who are in, they're now playing the final, if they hadn't lost to Feathered in their last group game, which was Feathered's first ever win in senior. Jesus. So and scraped into fourth spot. And uh, as I said, they absolutely hammered Anne's, Martin's hammered Anne's in that game. Now, the Lee caveat, Lee. yeah, and Dermot O'Keefe were both missing, I think, yeah. But, um, are, they, are they able to make that swing? 8, 22, 4 points, 22 points making up the difference? Well, it obviously would fundamentally change everything <laughs> yeah, no, that they would, do. Yeah. Um, but they've beaten Chameliers and Rapparees, which is a bit of a shock. And I mean, Rapparees have beaten them 5-17 to 2-14 in their last group game. Mm. Um, so that's some turnaround. And it's interesting because Dermot O'Keefe was saying to us earlier on there, he's actually on career break this year. He works in Dunboyne, right. uh, a secondary teacher, and he's planned on going away. And he mightn't be going away for, an yeah. for, an for another bit, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of GA players would do that, tip away in the autumn. Mm. And then the club run goes. You obviously want to win with the club, but and even uh, there, a lot of the time you hear about this, there are relationship scenarios where a guy and a girl, are, they're going out and they're waiting for that club season to end before they can head off on the travels yeah. and it's causing consternation. <laughs> um, I, yeah, like imagine that. You want a, fair, uh, you want a fairly willing partner, wouldn't you? Yeah. Fairness. Um, there was jockey, Mikey Fogarty. He's yeah. playing for uh, St. Anne's. Now, you'd be a big horse racing man, but um, he guided Don Poli to victory in the 2014 Martin Pipe Conditional Jockey's Handicap. Oh, Cheltenham, he's over 140 winners, like, and yeah. he, he packed it in two years ago, and he was basically working with his brother Johnny, who was also playing on the team. Yeah. They're working in games, town stood together, and there were a few broodmares, and we doing a bit of breeding and things like that. And he was kind of happy um, with packing it up at the racing, but he was only, he only he his first ride back in two years was at Galway. I don't know, was it last, it could have been last Monday it was, actually, yeah. He had a couple of rides, he didn't get, he didn't uh, have any winners or anything like that. So he's gone back to the racing, but he's keeping his hand and keeping his eye in at the hurling mm -hmm. as well. It's outstanding stuff, really. Like, and like, the only thing I will say is, is like, as teak tough athletes go, jockeys they don't get much yeah. harder than jockeys. So he'd be well used to the falls and the belts and stuff like that. It's fair going though. Could be done for overuse to the hurling. <laughs> Could be actually, yeah. Red Barry, everyone will remember Red Barry from that yeah. Wexford football team that got to the All Ireland semi final eleven years ago. He's on that team as well. Um, so was this a quote that you had from? Oh yeah, just that he was back working with his brother, and he was. That's why one of the reasons that he stepped out of Mikey, you know, yeah, Mikey. Mikey one of the reasons he stepped out of you know race riding was so that he could get back hurling because he seems to have a massive love for St Anne's so it's great to see him back great yeah. to see him back and he's doing both of them at the same time now yeah and in the other semi-final Rory O'Connor who's one of Wexford's best players and probably will be for a decade to come he got a straight red card and um, I, I saw it, Joe Coleman got a couple of lovely scores I think there was a sideline in there that was doing the rounds on the, on the internet and Wexford GA scores tweeted that he was very good you wouldn't uh, hurt him with a hammer who will St Anne's have to mark him Ferns couldn't handle the physical handle the physicality of him so they do have a brilliant team Jack O'Connor and like Rory O'Connor being out I mean if you're taking 
Lee Mogg McGovern and Dio Keefe and throwing him back into the team, and you're taking Rory O'Connor, yeah. the best player of the other team, all of a sudden do we have a maybe not 50 50 game, but it's not the sort of, you know, obvious uh, sort of procession. Definitely, and I always think you're always <coughs> been better going into a game like that as being the one with the chip on your shoulder, the yeah. one that took the beating. You have everything to prove, and whereas complacency could sit on the other side. You were down at the Watford final this weekend, so Bally Gunner completed the six in a row with a 124 team. Sorry, 124 to 115 win over Delisle. Yeah, interesting game because Bally Gunner uh, flew out of blocks. Uh, Daisy Hutchinson, who any soccer fan will know, mm. uh, used to play with Brighton and Hove Albion. He only came back in the last year. He got a goal after five minutes. They were 1-7 to a pint up and it looked like it was going to be a turkey yeah. shoot like the, the 2017 final. Uh, De La Salle kind of got back into it. They were playing uh, kind of a possession game against the Breeze and it just wasn't really working. It was breaking down. They let a couple of long balls in, got a lot of joy from them. Um, Eddie Meany picked up kind of a break from a sideline ball, rattled a good goal, changed the game. There were three down coming up to half time, two soft frees for Park Matney, who was outstanding. He had six yeah. from play and they, they couldn't really handle him. Uh, they went, they were five up, but De La Salle had a big breeze at their back. Conor McCann hit three points in a row nearly in the second half. Meany got another score. They were two down, 115 to 113, and then Bally Gunner hit the next eight points. In the, with the, in the last quarter, just like the, pre the gauntlet was laid down to them and they just totally stepped up to it and well, eight points in the, the game was over. When you have it in the bank that you can come through these games and they've done it so many times, well, it's 33 games unbeaten now yeah, in, think so, in yeah. Watford, reigning and monster champions. I mean, when it comes to a tight game or, or the idea of will you panic when the bright lights are on on the big day, it's just not going to happen. Do you, do you feel there was any sense that the bright lights kind of... Uh, startled De La Salle. Not really. No, no not really. Did, didn't get didn't get a chance to. Mm. Bally Gunner hit hit I'd say eight shots in a row, and the eight of them went over the bar. Yeah. There's really nothing you can do in that kind of instance. Um, there was a couple of players that stood out though. Daisy Hutchin, Hutchison. I kind of said blindly last week from following match reports and everything. He scored four points in semi final that he could possibly be something that Watford could look at. He definitely could All be. Pace, he, he? Uh, he's loads of pace, but he's loads of hurling. It's yeah. not like he's he's quite risky. Like he he hit a ball over the bar over his shoulder fifty yards out against the breeze. Like he's got loads of talent, and uh, it was great to see just how much it meant to him coming from a professional environment back to the J environment. Mm. Like he was nearly visibly in tears after he was just Happy. and his two brothers came on at the end. You know, JJ and Wayne had played in the seventeen county final or prepared for seventeen county final. Wayne did. Yeah, with, with Bally Gunner. And maybe he played I, one with. Um, with uh, St. Jude's in Dublin. That's right, actually, yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. It just, for, uh, towards the end of that game, actually. <laughs> you sent them back down to walk. <laughs> yeah, that was the way it worked. <laughs> but it was just great, it was great to see it, and uh, yeah, just Park Matney again, six from play, they literally could not handle him at all. Yeah. Kevin Moran was on him, and he tried to sit back and give him space, and Mat Matney had three points from play in nine minutes, like at the start, and uh, just got loose ball, and yeah, they were brilliant. Uh, the Clare final then, Six Mile Bridge winning uh, 21 points to 15. And just even the quote from Anthony Daly kind of summed it up nicely. He goes, Paddy Mean, the club chairman, uh, helped piece this success together. Davy Fitz and Tim Crow, who's the manager, hadn't spoken since 2007 after the fallout from the Tony Considine Fitzy affair, but Paddy got the two of them working together. That's class. Yeah. Yeah, it's class. Uh, there's a really good quote from Tim Crow as well um, where he says, like, people probably need to grow up a bit, like, falling out over hurling and stuff. Yeah. That is ridiculous. And um, that's a relationship that was clearly mended. And Tim Crow paid serious kind of kudos to Davy, who stepped out from his wedding for two hours on the Friday evening to take a session. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, we're talking about, like, uh, willing partners. But she is, like, the sp she understands now because she's the Sparrow Lachlan sister, but she is the most willing partner of them all. I think his quote would kind of... Well, she summed up something along the lines that she knew what she signed up for. Yeah, type yeah. Thing, which I'm sure she did. And like a lot, there was plenty of really good articles in the lead up to this. Like for example, Tim Crow, the manager, his daughter is married to Michael Hall, the full back for Cratlow, That's right, yeah. and uh, living under his roof. So <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Semi-finals do them more or less kind of you know an unwritten agreement will say nothing. He kind of said that he comes in the back door and I go, I come in the front, and this yeah. guy, I go out the front door, he comes out the back. <laughs> and Marie Crow. Um, interviewing uh, her father, Tim Crow, Marie Crow works for RT Sport. 
she was in interviewing him afterwards so that's probably a lovely moment for them yeah. to have awkward she, she knows probably the exact questions she could ask him to get the full story yeah 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 she probably has to throw the general one to, to not be I'd say if she wanted she could have got fair colour off him I'd say because <laughs> I'd say no more than any father you get a bit of colour in the kitchen right like that yeah. when you're chatting to but that's that's something like that is what makes the club so special that's like every weekend you have stuff like that going on it's just class yeah I gave my brother a lift to another hurling match after he played against Drum yesterday so. you're the unwritten you're the unwritten <laughs> hero <laughs> um, the next one uh, yeah let's let's move straight to Tipperary because um, there was all the quarterfinals were on this weekend and it's going to be an all north semi-final and final scenario no harm as a <laughs> you were on about earlier on the year about how the north like apart from you left out Tommy Barr obviously how the north hadn't won, won one in a while and now we have it's definitely going to be a north, north winner back. The North. The North. The North. <laughs> so uh, Nina Aero beat Aero again a character down the hill and beat him out the gate really four fifteen to one eight. Uh, Burris Lee beat Drum and Inch three eleven to eighteen points. I was down in that game. Were they hanging on? Burris Lee. Yeah. Well, like I looked at did the goals got rid of the early had they? No. What happened no? is Drum went to, like Burris Lee would have been seen as I'd say a favourites for mm. this game. Now, a couple of years ago beat him in the semi final. I said by ten points. It was actually by four. Okay. But what had happened is. At the time, I thought Burris Lee should have won that game by 10. So I'd say that was just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind. So a few people correct me over the weekend. <laughs> um, but Drum went five points to nil up here. Okay. And I thought Burris Lee just caught in the lights here, what's going on. Have had struggled at times over the last decade or more to get through quarterfinal mm. stages. Uh, but steadied down. And then James Devaney, JD, as he's known, scored two unbelievable goals and a few unreal uh, points also. Kieran Maher was inside with him full forward at times, and, and Kevin Maher as well. K- Kieran Maher is known as the body, by the way. I think he did one of those hanging competitions. You know the way. Oh like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, see how long he can hang on for him. He did it no bother. Go ahead, okay. Right on, Nick. But um, JD Devaney, he's the grandson of Liam Devaney, who was Caltex hurler of the year in 1961. There's good rare and going on there. Caltex. And the breeding is as good as a ton of feeding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, he's just he's just magic. Why are you just JD Devaney? He's he was minor last year, so I'd say he's eighteen. Okay. And, like before the county, sorry, the North semi final against Burgess, he himself and Kevin Maher had to play the day before, and also oh, before right, the yeah. North final, they both had to play the day before. That's right, yeah. So I think for Burgess Lee, it was a case of trying to respond to such a poor North final. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Devaney was class. Um, James Callan got a couple of nice scores from play, a couple of nice frees. When the ball went into him, he was dangerous. Now, the brother Paddy was on him, and, and I think came away with plenty of credit from it. But like, it's a tough task. Ah, I mean, it's if a the tough ball goes into Callan, yeah. he's absolutely huge. Uh, it's, about the out, it's about the players. It's about the players out the mm-hmm. field trying to make sure that the ball's coming in is not good and that the supply is dried up yeah. as much as possible. Woodlock started centre forward on Brendan Maher. Won a free early on and probably didn't get as involved after uh, Johnny Ryan Springer. He's he was midfield for for Drum and he's the sort of guy who could hit five or six from play mm. and put you under awful pressure. He was being man marked by Tom Ryan Foot, who did who, who did grand because just he limited the amount of scores. Tom Ryan Foot. Yeah, so his, his, I I've told this one before and his mother came up to me about it yesterday actually. His father is John Ryan Foot. All the Ryans have nicknames because there's so many and you need to differentiate them. Okay. So uh, when he was when he was a young lad, he was known as you know John Ryan Foot and then Tommy Toe. Ah, oh, you yeah, have actually, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. 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 For, um, anyway, so that was the Burris League game, came through there. Um, the other games were Killer One, Killer One beat Clonoty, the county champions, and beat them out the gate. It was 123 to 110. I think they went about nine points to nil ahead. Clonoty gasped for air. The story of the game, of course, was that at the end, Niall O'Mara got sent off. Now, there was a huge melee down at the bottom goals, and Sean Maher, who had come on for Clonolty and was really good and scored a goal, he ended up getting a second yellow card. Um, but it was Connor Hammersley had carried the ball in towards the goal and then just a load of bodies descended. Yeah. You know, the game was up, was up and you'd wonder why Killer wanted, wanted to get stuck in at this stage. But Niall O'Mara went in there, and I'm not saying he went in with any aggravated sort of... Uh, Intent or uh, anything yeah, such, yeah. like that. But someone definitely pulled across him. Okay. After that, it was very hard to pick out what happened. He ended up getting a red card. Timmy Hammersley ended up getting a red card. I have no idea if either of them deserved it. Mm. But a tweet went out from the Killer One um, account 
last night saying Kilowan will be appealing Niall O'Mara's red card and are very confident that it will be overturned. <laughs> you just don't see tweets like that, do you? No, you see, I, I'm actually club PRO in Borough like, as well. And like, if I, there's times there I do wonder, like with clubs, it's brilliant, like yeah. where it's just like a personal opinion. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. not the club's opinion, it's a personal opinion. Like, that's somebody who's really annoyed with how it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There and Maybe there. they have video evidence as well that they know something that we don't I'm do sure there, there is video there. I, I don't know under what circumstances it's admissible and, and isn't. Sometimes yeah. you hear that someone, let's say, had, had footage on a camera phone, and but it can't be used. Whereas yeah. if you have official cameras that have been accredited there, that it can be. By the way, just before I come to the last game, the semi-finals are going to be Nina against uh, Killer Dangan and Boris Lee against Killer One. So Jerome Cal went off injured for uh, Killer One early in the game. Yeah, He's the under-20 uh, player of the year. And um, as I said, Niall O'Mara, brilliant player for, for Tipperary all year. Like, as th- those two, that, like, that will hinge a lot. Like, Drone Cat is class. Yeah. Niall yeah. O'Mara is obviously playing the half back line as well, and it's massive for them. Yeah. So. Now, people will think that I'm trying to play down Burris Lee or whatever. Which but you Killer, are. Killer One are absolutely class. Anyway, they're in great physical condition. Ah, we've, really been, we've, been, we've been kind of yeah. talking yeah. them up for since we started, like, Most really, haven't we? Most players would have played underage for Tipperary. Yeah. Seamus Hennessy's in goals, is he? Seamus Hennessy, yeah, yeah, a broad one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I'd say if his knees hadn't, if he hadn't had so many injuries over the years, he he would have gone on to do a lot of great stuff with Tip Seniors. Of course, came on the twenty ten final and got a point. Actually, I believe the Nina uh, goalkeeper is, is Shane Hensey. Is his name is young lad. He's after doing his cruise I think for the fourth time, Ooh, which is a tough. Jenny Mac four times. Yeah, so Kildangan uh, beat Toomey Vara three twelve to one twelve. So they're true after. Um, I think Toom came back well to level it, but Joe Gallagher got a goal late on. It kind of decided it, and James Quigley was outstanding at full back. So, the, but the story behind the story, you know us down in Tipperary, we don't take defeat well. Um, but Shane Brophy, who worked for the Nina Garden, he put out a tweet saying, Philip Kelly, who refereed Kildangan against Toom Senior Hurling Corps final yesterday, had his house egged during the night and also received abusive te- text messages around the same time. He isn't taking it to the Garden, but the club involved have been informed. Oh, Jesus. Some yoke. It's mad, isn't it? Eggs, so milk. Like, <laughs> it's uh, mad, dog. Yeah, look, we it? don't know who did it, and if it was a Tumi Vara person, but like, it's kind of obviously it's bad form, but it's hilarious at the same time. <laughs> uh, the text messages, if they're abusive, that's obviously yeah, not yeah. not good form in any way, shape, or form, and that's just to be discouraged. Again, that's sort of it's, it would only happen in the club. Yeah, yeah, just people take it so personally. Then again, there could be a situation where someone is thinking, right. I'll never get blamed. It'll be someone from Toomey Bar getting blamed and someone else. That's who true, yeah. That's true, yeah. The There's no legislation for, like, there are a lot of idiots out there. There's no legislation Walt for them. Walt Wallet. <laughs> Walt Wallet. Sure, think of the, some of the, the responses you get on Twitter. Ah, uh, stop. Some of the yeah, stuff you yeah, put yeah. up. Now, when you'll be putting up silly enough stuff. Yeah. <laughs> some of the stuff, some of the comments that I get in some of these videos of my clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and rightly so. <laughs> Look at you, you're in space. Did your mother buy that for you? Uh, uh, she did, actually, yeah, for Christmas. It's a Jack Willis. It's lovely. Uh, the Carlo Championship. So there was so much, um, yeah. There, like obviously, Ballon Killen, for a while, it had been seen that they had forfeited their semi final mm. because the the whole clash with the football the night before. There were a few. They said that they weren't going to play the hurling after the footballers the night before. But anyway, eventually, common sense was uh, came through and St Mullins played Ballon Killen over the weekend in the county semi final with Mount Leinster Rangers waiting in the final. Ballon Killen led by three points deep into injury time. Oh no! And then Mullen struck for a, a goal, two twelve to one fifteen. Sent it to extra time, and Mullins ran away with it an extra time to win by six. It's to be honest, like it's the, it is the perfect result in a way. Ballin Killen, Ballin Killen were there, had their chance, but Mullins were the ones that like extended the olive branch and went above and beyond the call of duty. Yeah. Plus, they'll be really well prepared going into the final against Mount Leinster now. Yeah. But, but yeah just it would have been sick if they'd offered them the game uh, to make sure the game was played again and they were beaten by them yeah yeah, definitely but there would have always been kind of an asterisk beside it if they ha- like they did their part yeah if, yeah if they kind of vouched for Ballon Killen and Leinster decided look sorry unfortunately it's, not, it's just not going to happen yeah, at least yeah. Mullins can always say look we did our bit but true anyway, yeah they're true now against Ballon but Leinster. more drama by all accounts in yeah. Carlo yeah and yeah well I mean it's been a recurring issue it seems in Carlo this year and Patrick Robinson tweeted in saying the intermediate B hurling final in Carlow on Sunday. Nave Breed beat Carlow Town 310 to 18. Carlow had to play their semi final on Friday night 
and Neve, uh, Neve Breed received a walkover playing a semi-final and a final within 48 hours in a five-team championship where one team withdrew and then Leinster Junior Hurling Championship this weekend so that is a bit of a joke now what? what's like five going on like, and for the last six months? you're talking about a final and a semi-final on a Friday and a Sunday I don't know that's especially at junior level I mean yeah. how many inter-county lads are going to be picked out of these teams? no I don't know very few yeah. very well according, by all accounts with the Carlo Senior Hurling panel like I don't know even know if there's anyone from a junior club yeah well yeah so it's very disappointing Galway Championship at the weekend so we're down, we're going to be down to the semi-final stage now and just to give you the, the draw for that it'll be Capitagal against Liam Mellows and St. Thomas is against Turlock Moore third year in a row Capitagal and Mellows in the semi-final yeah and Cap the last two were won by a point yeah, by Mellows yeah sick but anyway, we'll run through the quarterfinals that happened at the weekend. Uh, just to give the scorelines first, Lee Meadows beat Sarsfields 216 to 6 points. Capitagal beat Lockray uh, 218 to 14. Thomas's beat uh, Tommy Larkin 16 to 14. And Turlock Moore beat Crockwell uh, 21 points to 14. So starting off with Meadows, yeah, so they won the title in 2017, lost the final in 2018, looking to get back to the final again. Uh, Sarsfields were awful. Joseph Cooney isn't, uh, just isn't available at the moment. I think he's away. The talk, like he was in Australia before, the talk is he won't be back for Galway for 2020, which is a huge, huge blow between mm -hmm. that and having no manager. And just this thing dragging on. Yeah, but when, when they don't have a manager, that would just um, push a lad's decision a bit more as yeah. well. Like, he doesn't know who he's coming back to. Like, yeah. He could be coming back to an absolute mess. Uh, apparently, Ty Karen is back in club hurler the year for him. He got 11 points for Mellows. Uh, Louis Mulqueen is over them, but I mean, he was... The talk was that he was going to get pushed through as Clare manager last week. That hasn't happened, but also it's generally thought that this will be his last year with Mellows. So. He's done unbelievable work with Mellows. You know, it's a county final, county final win, county final loss, and yeah. semi final. And they hadn't won a county title since the seventies, I believe. Yeah, Louis actually lectured me in college. Would you believe? Did he? Yeah. He used to come over from. He was prince principal in Shannon, I think. We think you might have some insight on him there. Um, we'll do a Louis Mulqueen not, profile yeah, here on today. Yeah, so far. <laughs> uh, Capitagal beating Lockray 218 to 14 points. Now. The one thing I do remember about Louis, he said he was a geography lecturer, he, he always said, geography is everywhere. That's what he said. Wow, <laughs> inspiring. <laughs> Capitagal against Lockray, so that was 10 points for a finish. Ollie Baker in the Capitagal side of things. Brendan Bugler apparently um, involved with Lockray, so they're, uh, they've avenged the group defeat and doing it at the right time. So... The talk, you know, Capitagal would be the, the personified rural club. Now, I spoke with David Connors at Peter's Wellman on Twitter. He gave me a lot of the, the insights into what happened at the weekend. But, uh, yeah, sort of a real country rural club. People want to see him do well. Damien Joyce, they're playing at centre-back. People will remember him from the county stage. Lock Ray didn't even score from play in the second half. So that's how bad. No, Lock Ray would be struggling in comparison to the last four or five years. We played Capitagal about six weeks ago, I'd say, with Burr. Yeah. Um, we went down there. Uh, it's a lovely, it's a really cool country setup, and they've, they've maxed, they've maxed out on resources and have everything they should have. And they've a good side. And it's one of these things. It's just so close in semi-finals. It just need to get over the line now. Yeah. Doesn't it doesn't have to be pretty next. They just need to get through it. Um, so Tommy Larkins were actually beating St. Thomas yeah. by a point going into I think it was like 59 minutes on the clock Ronan Murphy had put them one ahead but then uh, a late Conor Cooney point and apparently an unbelievable sideline cut from Davy Burke and yeah. Thomas has ended up winning by two nine minutes of injury time so even when they went behind late on they knew she was still have another 10 yeah, minutes yeah so yeah yeah true no yeah panic. but apparently there was a lot of uh, people there that were complaining by the amount of management team on the field and all the stoppages uh, as we've said at one point there was 11 non-playing individuals on the team which is some joke 11 non-playing individuals yeah. on the field yeah oh, this is what David Connors was telling me so can you imagine trying to take a puck out in that scenario <laughs> she'd know where to hit him <laughs> can't hit grass anywhere um, you mentioned Dana Burke and his, uh, his health scare before the All-Ireland he, uh, he left the ground in a sling so obviously he, he's, he's going to be under pressure for the semi-final but Fintan Burke who did his cruciate in the All-Ireland uh, final against uh, Bally Hale he took part in the warm-up so that's encouraging in Ooh, terms that of is his, encouraging his, yeah. His, yeah and like he, he looks so good with, um, with with them and with the under 21s that you think he would be a real prospect for oh he's Gold. a massive prospect yeah. he's a ma monster of a man he's kind of a, to me like he's I obviously I've only seen him seen him a few times but he's like a, mm -hmm. a younger version of Polly Matter genuinely that left hand bull under the high ball really really strong um, be interested to see now. Yeah, no, I I would rate him very very highly. No, I'm not to be honest with you. No, 
I'm not though. I think he could be deadly. Uh, so Turlock Moore chasing their first county final since 1985, won by seven points against Crockwell. Franny Ford, who was being linked with the Galway job, and you never know, still might be drawn back in there. He's part of the management team for, for Turlock. Knight Healy went off injured in the second half early enough for Crockwell. He's their best player, and so I think Turlock Moore cruised home from there. Um, so the, the top Kyle Healy who I think followed me on Twitter after I mentioned him yeah. so glowingly last week I, I'm not sure if I got the follow up <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> small, right? but uh, with Turlock Moore we've talked about him a few times and the underage success and having so much of it they, they reached the intermediate semi-finals as well which is probably a real reflection of their depth um, that's so fair going now that yeah 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 but they would have I, th- I think they do have a big pick they would have a big enough pick, yeah, yeah in fairness, yeah. they would, yeah. Uh, Daniel Loftus and Sean uh, Lennan, he played cornerback a few games for Galway this year in the league. They were very good. Um, so Loftus scored three points from wing back. Dahi Burke, there's talk that he has glandular fever and uh, he wouldn't have been at his best. He missed Cor Finn's last few championship games, actually. Played midfield and uh, hasn't wasn't really at the races, so glandular fever can be a hard thing to shake off yeah I remember Chad Fitz played uh, an all in club semi final with glandular fever did Andrew Redney really have it as well could have had yeah or? like it apparently knocks the funk out you know we yeah. all can say yeah. um, so as I said Capitagal against Mellows in one of the semi-finals third, third year in a row and then um, Thomas is against Turlock Moore who've had plenty of battles underage over the years Kilkenny it was a big weekend of course um, O'Loughlin Gales against Mullinavat so that was 114 O'Loughlin's Mullinavat 13 O'Loughlin's were 6 down at half time yeah and apparently a, an 85 metre uh, score from Mark Bergen kind of wrapped up the win there towards the end um, the Ballyhale Shamrocks against Clara so obviously this game was postponed because of the the tragedy last week with Eugene Aylward um, Ballyhale I think there were something like 6 or 7 points 7, seven, seven, seven down yeah. yeah and it was 13-7 at the break but they, they reeled them back in and a TJ Reid goal helped uh, turn it. Michael Fellini came on at midfield. Yeah, he had a micro fracture in his knee yeah, and he kind of was playing down the prospect of him playing this year and yeah. I just kind of thought, he said he had a lot of rehab to do which I'm sure he probably still has something to do but like he's played off limited preparation before so that wouldn't be an issue. Like They're going to be playing next weekend again against O'Loughlin so uh, it'd be interesting he'd probably feature even more but Fegan had a good video of uh, TJ going for a line ball out yeah. in the middle of the field and he, he kind of duffs the line ball and it just bounces back at his feet a lad basically pulls it, pulls, goes to pull on it misses the ball TJ picks it and puts the ball over the shoulder from about 70 or 80 yeah. yards it's a joke like, like yeah 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 gone. Um, yeah he scored 114 Adrian Mullen got a couple Brian Cody Ronan Corker and Owen Cody were getting scores as Joey well. Holland's supposed to have been deadly for them yeah as well, very yeah. good at full back yeah. much maligned Joey yeah. Mullen um, so the village James Stevens they beat Aaron's own 115 to 29. Cheddar had an event today. <laughs> I think he was sent off for being on the field too much. I don't think it was like anything malicious or anything like that. I just think he, he was on the field the whole time. He should have gone into the Galway hurling championship. They would have said. Yeah, that. true. Yeah, he would have. He would have been more than welcome. Cheddar, of course, would be very friendly with Seamus Dwyer. Seamus teaches in Kilkenny CBS and the Leishman. Uh, Chad Dwyer's brother actually, yeah. and. Um, they kind of linked up down there, back in a back in the county final. Have more months since two thousand and eleven. Yeah. So it was six points each at the break. Luke Scanlon got that goal in the second half. Jackie Tyrrell back in at fullback, so he had been injured, and that's why he was coming on full forward apparently. And uh, apparently now he put a bit of manners on Anthony Owens. You know the guy the guy who had uh, pushed the goalie in the net. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Expert that time so uh, yeah, yeah. Dixborough's two goals were from freeze as well like so the village were not comfortable but they were always in control right. Comer's goals yeah yeah Comer sorry yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and in, of course we have to mention the intermediate because Tommy Wall scored four points from play from full mm. forward for Tullerone against Young Ireland's 217 to 215 so they were crucial scores and they're going to meet Thomastown in the final who beat St. Lacton's of Freshford 121 to 110 Robbie Donnelly with 14 that's a few was 14 points that should be a belter of a game yeah. someone described Tommy the other day they just said he knows the legs are gone but his head is more active than ever <laughs> <laughs> uh, the London semi-finals as well St. Gabriel's 115 Kilburn Gales 114 and Robert Emmett's 211 Brother Pierce's uh, nine points so that's Gabriel's against Emmett's in the final yeah I think Gabriel's were, were like always ahead but it was a bit of a struggle and as we said last week uh, Neil Rogers from Burr he's player manager for Gabriel's and uh, Brian Regan who had that you know horrible accident last year where he, he nearly died on the pitch for Kilburn was Kilburn manager um, it's going to be interesting just going down through it there uh, Shane Lawless from Kilnadima Leitrim he got uh, he got the Gabriel's goal and Dave Nolan who's from Tumi Vara got 10 points for them as well and in the other semi-final then the Emmets who'd be who'd be strong and well fancied beat Brother Pierce's 
211 to 9 points. Uh, what was it there? Yeah, Benny McGarry, who played for Lockheed Yield when they won the 2012 All Ireland final, he got both goals. He scored 2 5 for Emmets. And Ben Connery, who's from Leash, uh, an unbelievable addition this year for the Emmets by all accounts, he uh, he got 4 or 5 points from mm-hmm. freeze as well. So that'll be an interesting final in two weeks. The football this weekend and then the, the hurling the week after. John Gish Gales won the Longford final, beating Longford Slashers, who've now lost. Uh, county finals in both codes this year so it was 119 Clongish Gales Longford Slashers 10 points Joe O'Brien scored 12 points 9 of them were from play Paul Barden the county football and hero perhaps yeah. their greatest ever player yeah. many would say uh, scored 1-1 so uh, fair play to him the Mayo final was on at the weekend Turin uh, 18 points Castlebar Mitchells 113 um, Fergal Boland scored three points. People would have seen him play for the Mayo Footballers this year. And another Boland, Shane Boland, scored seven five frees. Ken Bit, Feeney has yeah. been there forever. Legend. <laughs> Legend of Mayo Harland. I'd say he's about probably 50 county guys. <laughs> A day. bit deceptive as well because uh, the scoreline probably at the end, Torine were 14 7 up, and I think they were always in control. The yeah. scoreline probably looks a bit tighter than it actually was. Uh, the Sligo final then, Naveena, sorry, Nave Owen beat Eski 1 12 to 12 points. Yeah, I think this is Nave Owen's first title. They were beaten in the final last year. Uh, Eski hadn't won it since like 1963 or something like that. But Tony O'Kelly Lynch, he'd be a brother of, uh, I think his brother, Joe O'Kelly Lynch, the one of the rare, rare jewel stars mm. still playing. Um, he was kind of the star of the show. He had eight points, uh, six frees. But uh, yeah, great win for them. As far as I know, they're first. Yeah. And then uh, just a, a Camogie result also. Sarsfields bridged a 30-year gap to lift the Camogie senior title in Cork. 3-9 to 15 winners over uh, Munster champions uh, in Ishgara. Just shows it as well. I was only, kind of, when I saw that result, I was only thinking, like, just Milford were Club All-Ireland winners only like three or four years ago. Just shows you the depth of talent that they have in the, in the Cork Club Camogie game. It's unreal. So that's it for the Hurling Chat. Uh, yeah. Hurling Club Talk. Let us know if there's any stories we missed, any any good crack that uh, we haven't yet mentioned, and let us know if there's anything good coming up this weekend. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube by clicking on that button just there on the side of the screen.